All right, beta. The topic that we are discussing is how to prepare income statement in a manufacturing setup. And now this is a question we are already uh, we have already learned how to prepare manufacturing account. We have already learned how to prepare manufacturing account. And now we are going to prepare an income statement. Now this is a question, beta. Uh, we are already done with part A manufacturing account. If you haven't learned this, you must go through. Uh, the lesson that contains how to prepare manufacturing account uh, and now we are going to prepare this income statement sorry it's the part a only we are done with this requirement manufacturing account and now we are to solve the income statement now let us see beta how can we make the income statement for the out uh, overall factory let's see how we can prepare it we are going to prepare the income statement beta income statement is always made in two columns First of all, we have sales and better sales that is revenue and revenue is always for the finished goods and not for the raw material. Okay, be because we are not selling the screws and plastic and metal. We are selling the iPhones. Okay, so the revenue would be, would be the for the iPhones or iPads. Then we have cost of sales and how to calculate this cost of sale better. First of all, we have opening inventory. And as you remember previously better in the manufacturing account, we used to write uh, inventory for raw material and then in the last inventory for incomplete goods that is work in progress but while making the income statement for the outlet we are only concerned with the inventory of finished goods okay so we are going to write better opening and closing inventory for finished goods that is ready iphones that are ready for sale then we need to add market value or transfer value of finished goods so beta, how can we uh, get this market value and for that first we need to learn how to prepare the manufacturing account that we covered in the previous lesson. So this is the market value of finished goods that we are going to transfer it from factory. Then we have beta closing inventory again closing inventory also should be for the finished goods and it must be on the transfer price and not the factory cost. If we uh, add and subtract these we are going to get cost of sale and if we did a cost of sale from the revenue we are going to get gross profit now beta after gross profit there is other income but in this question we do not have other income so we can uh, directly move on to the expenses now instead of writing the heading as expenses beta we are going to write non manufacturing or non production overhead so any expenses for the outlet would be termed as non manufacturing expenses uh, such as uh, uh, outlet rent or outlet administration or office or irrecoverable debt or loan interest and all such advertising and selling okay so first of all beta we are going to get profit from trading so first of all let's uh, calculate how much uh, this aesthetic outlet has earned and then we uh, can move on and, and to add the uh, factory profit okay first of all beta we need revenue and revenue beta is always for what for finished goods now let me read the question again for you guys uh, aesthetic plc is a manufacturing business extracted the following balances from its books of account for the year ending 30 april 2012 now let us see beta year is ending on 30 april 2012 first of all beta we need revenue okay revenue is basically sales so we are going to write revenue and how much is it beta it is 6500000 000. revenue is 65 lakh now after sales would come cost of sale first of all opening inventory opening inventory is the stock that we have in the outlet at the start of the year now as you can see beta if the year is ending on 30 april 2012 now the year must have been started on first may 2011 so first may would be an opening inventory and we are concerned with opening inventory of what opening and closing inventory of finished goods right now and not for the raw material and work in progress Better the raw material work in progress we have already used it while preparing manufacturing account so opening inventory would be 330,000 so beta after opening inventory would come market value of goods manufactured market value huh? Here you so market value of finished goods beta market value is how much uh, it is 54 lakh 30,000 so these are the goods that were transferred from factory 54 lakh 30,000 better then we have closing inventory and closing inventory would be for again finished goods now the closing inventory beta is always there in the notes and opening inventory is on the list now again finished goods closing inventory is on what price it's a transfer price transfer price means beta it is the price that is charged by the factory to its outlet 
okay if factory is making a, a phone for thousand dollar and they are charging a uh, two hundred dollars profit that is twenty percent markup so twelve hundred would be the transfer price and the outlet uh, would would supposed to sell it for more than twelve hundred because outlet also wants to earn some profit okay so this is the transfer price this is basically the cost of the outlet okay or the selling price of the factory now opening add market value less closing would be cost of sales so uh, the phones that we have sold are uh, worth sixty five hundred thousand dollars and this had cost apple company for example five three twenty two thousand now the difference between the selling price and cost of sale is the gross profit of what outlet now the question here arises sir do outlet has any expenses yes there can be non-production overhead or office or admin overhead. Let us see, beta. first of all, we have carriage outward. Now, carriage outward is delivery cost and carriage outward is always for finished goods and not the raw material. Why, beta? Because we are selling finished goods and not the raw material. Okay, so the carriage outward would always be for the raw material, uh, finished goods. Then we have office overhead, okay? Uh, whether it's say office overhead or admin or selling or marketing, uh, all of these costs would be charged to the income statement. Now, as you can see, note number two, office overheads uh, of 35,000 have been prepaid. Okay, so the prepaid would be subtracted at the end of the year. Okay, prepaid. So office overhead would be charged here. And how much are there? Beta? It is 1025,000 to office overhead, 1025,000. To and what we need to do, beta, we need to subtract the prepaid part. Okay, prepaid would be subtracted. So as you may be aware, beta accrued plus and prepaid minus at the end of the year. Then we have uh, office depreciation. And how is this being calculated? Beta depreciation for the year is given already 150. But this is the total depreciation. And it belongs to the factory and the office both. And this is to be split. We need to apportion it in the factory and office in the ratio 2 ratio 1. Now if you remember beta when we made the manufacturing account, we charged the depreciation as 2 thirds. So out of the three portions, if two portions belong to the factory, then means one portion belong to the outlet. Okay. So 150,000 times one upon three. Previously, we did two upon three while making manufacturing account. And now we are supposed to write the remaining value that is 50,000. We also have a carriage outward. Beta. There are two types of carriage here. One is carriage inward and one is carriage outward. So carriage inward, inward always belong to the raw material uh, uh, unless the examiner clearly says that carriage inward relates to what? Uh, finished goods, okay, because we do not purchase finished goods normally. So therefore the carriage inward is always for raw material and it must be charged in the manufacturing account and carriage outward has no confusion. Carriage outward is always for the finished goods. Because we never sell raw material, we always sell ready product that is finished goods. So carriage outward would be charged here. And how much is it carriage outward, beta? It is uh, 75,000. It's written in the question here, carriage outward 75,000. So if we add up all of the outlet expenses, these sum up as triple one five thousand. And if we did a gross profit uh, and expenses, we are going to get profit from outlet. So beta previously in the basic level, uh, in the O levels, basically uh, we are only supposed to calculate profit till here. That is uh, profit for the year. It must be termed as profit for the year. But in the manufacturing setup, as we we are aware of uh, that uh, it is not only the outlet that earns profit, but instead, uh, but uh, the factory also earns some profit. So what we are going to do beta, we need to add up the factory profit here and the factory profit must be realized profit. Now, sir, what is the difference between realized profit and unrealized profit? But a realized profit means the factory has charged the profit from outlet and the outlet has been able to sell those goods to external users. Okay, to some third party. The, so the uh, the profit that was being charged by the factory has now been realized. Why? Because the outlet has also sold these goods to the outsiders. So the profit that was earned by the factory is now being earned. Okay, it, it can now be booked. It can be realized. Now, what happens when the outlet is unable to sold the goods that he have purchased from the factory? 
then the profit that the factory has charged to the outlet uh, would still be termed as unrealized. Why? Because the outlet has been unable to sell those goods to the outside customer. So, beta, let me summarize you. Uh, the realized profit of the factory is the profit that the factory has charged from what? The outlet and the outlet has been able to sell those goods at the end of the year. Okay. But if still outlet is unable to sell some of the goods that on those goods, the factory has charged profit would be termed as unrealized because these goods have not yet sold to the outsiders. Okay. So this would be unrealized profit. So how can we calculate realized profit? First of all, beta, the starting point would be the factory profit. Now, as you can see, when we made the manufacturing account beta, we charge a 20% markup on the production cost and it was 905,000. So this means beta, this year, how much profit has been charged by the uh, factory to the outlet 905,000. Now we are going to adjust it for the inventory unrealized profit. We are going to see whether the unrealized profit PUP stand for provision for unrealized profit. We need to see if the inventory has increased during the year or it has been decreased during the year. But uh, let us see opening inventory was 330,000. This means when this year started, the outlet has Apple store has how many uh, phones worth of $330,000 worth of for iPhones. And at the end of the year, the inventory was increased. Why? Because maybe because due to the increase in prices, inflation, uh, the purchasing power of customers have gone down and the customers have not yet pur purchased many phones. So as you can see, inventory is increased from 330 to 438. If the inventory is increased, therefore, better the unrealized profit has also been increased. So how can we calculate unrealized profit? There are two ways to do that. The first way is to uh, do the direct method and the second way is to prepare a provision account. So we are going to discuss both of these methods. First of all, I'm going to do to, through the direct method. Opening inventory is how much better? 330,000 and this is the transfer price and the closing inventory is how much better? 438,000. If we can see inventory has clearly been increased. So the difference between 330 and 438 would be uh, 108 maybe. So $108,000 worth of inventory has increased. So what we are going to do, we need to calculate the profit on these $108,000 of goods. So because these are unrealized profit. Now you must remember beta, there are two types of percentages. Uh, I'm not sure if you have uh, learned previously. Uh, one is uh, profit markup and another one is profit margin. Now beta, what is markup? Whenever we are calculating the percentage on the cost, okay? So the percentage is known as markup and whenever we are calculating the percentage on the selling price or revenue, then that percentage is supposed to be called profit margin. So there are two types of percentages while calculating profit. One is profit markup and one is profit margin. So but the markup is always calculated on cost and margin is always calculated on the selling price. Now, as we can see here in note four, Completed production is transferred at a markup on cost of 20% because it's a markup. Now, but the question here arises, uh, this opening and closing inventory, is it the cost price or transfer price? But uh, it's a transfer price. And how are we are sure about this? As you can see, it's already written transfer price. So this is the price that has been charged by factory to their own outlet. Okay, this is the transfer price. So on the price, we are not supposed to charge a markup. But on the selling price, we are supposed to charge margin. So, but in this question, we are only being given what markup and not the margin. So how can we co convert the beta markup into the margin? There is a special formula of conversion from markup into margin. And that is markup upon 100 plus markup. Beta, what is the formula? Markup upon 100 plus markup. Beta, how much is the markup? Markup is 20% uh, and if we convert the markup into margin, we can do this by 20 upon 120. Why is it 120 better? 100 plus 20 would be 120. So if we apply 20 upon 120, it would be 1 upon 6 if we calculate it using the calculator. 1 upon 6 or 16.7% to be precise. If we apply 1 upon 6 to this uh, selling price, this would be a profit of 18,000. 
now beta uh, uh, out of the 905000 profit that the factory has charged this year 18000 would be termed as unrealized why is this unrealized because uh, beta 108000 goods this means have not uh, sold this year but beta if the goods have not sold this year uh, so the profit is not yet realized why because uh, once the uh, uh, unless and until the outlet has sold the goods to the outside customers uh, the factory profit has uh, would be termed as unrealized now out of this 905000 beta 18000 is unrealized so therefore the realized profit would be how much 887000 dollar okay so beta the outlet has earned how much profit 63000 and factory has earned how much profit 887000 that is the realized profit if we add up both of these beta we can get the overall net profit okay so the overall net profit that uh, the business uh, asteric plc overall they have earned through factory and through outlet if we add up both then the overall net profit is how much 950000 beta to calculate this profit realized profit 887000 there are two ways to calculate this realized profit and one method we have already done it uh, while preparing the income statement we can directly do this working uh, in order to find this 887000 factory realized profit now the question arises sir which is the other method to calculate realized profit and the other method is to make a provision for unrealized profit account so sir uh, in this question although it was not required but uh, many times the examiner clearly asked uh, gives us a requirement to make a this provision account okay so whenever we are asked to make a provision account we must make it unless we will lose marks so but a provision is a credit in nature and why it is credit in nature you must have studied previously that provision is a contra asset okay it reduces the value of our asset so therefore provision is always credit in nature okay so balance brought down beta would be on credit always if balance bd is on credit opening balance then or closing balance must be on debit okay so beta whenever the factory charges profit so the entry would be beta uh, manufacturing account we are going to debit the manufacturing account and provision account would be credited so why is this provision credited beta whatever profit we charge this year would be classified as unrealized okay so the profit once it is realized it would be transferred to where it would be transferred to an income statement now you must remember beta provision is always credit in nature but uh, what happens when we close the provision account and we need to transfer it to income statement provision that has a credit nature would be debited and it would be transferred to where beta it would be transferred to an income statement now let us see beta how to calculate this balance bd now this is a opening balance of unrealized profit and it would be calculated using the inventory uh, we already uh, saw how to make an income statement as you can see opening inventory of finished goods is how much 330000 okay now beta if the inventory is transfer price and not the cost that on, on the price we have just discussed we are uh, going to apply a margin percentage on the price and not the markup but the problem is that in this question we are only being given markup that is uh, based on cost so what we are going to do beta we are going to convert the markup into the margin and how do we do that it would be markup upon 100 plus markup so if we do 20 upon 120 or 1 upon 6 then it would be converted into margin so what are we going to do beta we are going to apply uh, 1 upon 6 or markup upon 100 plus markup or 20 upon 120 to uh, the opening value of inventory that is transfer price and if you are applying 1 upon 6 then it would be uh, inventory of uh, it would be unrealized profit in the opening inventory so this means the opening inventory that the outlet has at the start of the year contains factory profit of how much 55,000 now we are going to suppose to do the same thing with the closing inventory now as you can see how much closing inventory beta we do have as you can see note number five closing inventory is also on the transfer price that is four hundred and thirty eight thousand 
so beta on this closing inventory we are also going to apply 1 upon 6 20 upon 120 on the closing inventory and again it's an unrealized profit now beta at the start of the year the goods that the outlet had a uh, factory profit was 55,000 at the end of the year the goods that the outlet has it contained factory profit of how much 73,000 now how much profit was charged by the factory this year now as you can see factory has charged beta this year 20% profit on the cost that is markup and it's 905,000 and because of that uh, as you can see uh, we are adding up the manufacturing cost so we are debiting the manufacturing account and if the manufacturing account is debit then the provision must be credit okay so this is the 905 the profit that we have charged this year now beta in the opening inventory uh, we had a factory profit of this and this year factory charge further profit from the outlet of 905 if you add up both of these containing opening and this year uh, goods so the total profit uh, if we add up both of these would be 960 now out of that 960 beta 73,000 profit is still what? Out of this 960,000 profit beta 73 profit is still unrealized. Okay, out of this 960 profit 73,000 profit beta is still uh, unrealized. So if we uh, deduct from this, we are going to get realized profit. And how much is the realized profit beta? It's 887,000. This is the realized profit. Now we can also confirm this that whether uh, this answer is correct uh, as you can see we have already calculated this 887,000 while preparing this income statement directly as you can see this is ma this just match now so what is the difference between uh, this working and the working that we did while making a PUP account this is basically the short work shortcut working so instead of calculating uh, unrealized profit on opening separately and closing inventory separately such as balance bd and cd what we did we just uh, uh, calculated the difference between the opening and closing inventory and that was one one oh eight thousand and we just calculated uh, profit once okay and the difference now the difference was eighteen thousand and if we see this once more again the difference is the same uh, as you can see opening inventory unrealized profit is 55 and closing inventory unrealized profit is 73 as you can see the difference is still the same okay so beta this is the profit that we have earned this year uh, and this would be termed as zero so we are only going to make provision account when only when the examiner asks us to do so and if the examiner doesn't specifically ask us to prepare a provision account we can do this working directly in the income statement